Welcome to Daily Five for Monday, August 19th, 2024. If you support anybody through the Patreon platform, you may have seen a message from a creator or two or all that you support saying, hey, there's going to be a change to the Patreon because Apple is now enforcing their 30% fee on anybody who uses the iOS platform or I guess the App Store in general to subscribe to Patreon. And this is because there was an announcement made within the last week, week and a half. I can't even remember. Time flies so fast now. But there, there was an announcement that starting in November... Anybody using Patreon who had people that were subscribing via an Apple platform was either going to have to eat the 30% increase in fees that Patreon is now going to have to pay to Apple, or they would have to raise their prices or subscription tiers or whatever on anybody who subscribes using that platform, or ideally telling people don't use Apple to subscribe to our platform, go to a website, go to the web instead of using the, the app store or whatever, and that way you bypass the fee. And I saw there's, I'm going to link to a Business Insider article where it said, Apple is making enemies of creators, you know, and I've seen similar stuff, some far more extreme than that, where there's people who are saying this is a concerted effort by Apple, where they're turning their backs on creators. And uh, what, I saw a quote in that Business Insider article said, uh, Apple has gone from think differently to think extortionate, which, while clever, I, I do like the, the use of that fake word, it is a little bit histrionic to say something like that because this should not really surprise anybody this is sort of a common thread in a lot of the things that i've said about big companies in general and apple specifically this was somewhat inevitable and in fact in some ways it's remarkable apple hasn't done this sooner because by not requiring patreon to do the 30 percent, they're opening themselves up to others saying well why can't you make an exception to us and they're in the middle of a whole bunch of different lawsuits and investigations by the EU and the United States. So, of course, this is going to start happening. But more to the point, there is still this idea among some people, which is baffling to me, that Apple today is the same company it was when Steve Jobs came back and saved it from going under. And th that was a completely different era, not only of the company, but also of the way that it dealt with the people who use their products. That is not Apple anymore. It is really telling that Steve Jobs was a vision person and Tim Cook is a logistics person because Apple today is not really anymore the vision company or the kind of innovation company. And I know some people are going to dispute that. I'm not talking about the software. I'm not talking about the features. I'm talking about the overall ethos of Apple is not what it was before. Because in many ways, despite the fact that I know there's far more Windows products and far more Microsoft products, Apple and Microsoft are very similar companies at this point. And so it should not be all that surprising that Apple is more and more acting in ways that are Microsoft-like or even Alphabet-like or Google-like, whatever phrase you want to use for it. Because they're not interested anymore in small groups that they need to court in order to get themselves into a position of financial security. They are now in a position of financial dominance. In many ways, Apple may be more powerful than Microsoft, even though their market share may not be anywhere near parity with them. That doesn't matter. This is a company that is often in the top 10 or five richest companies in the world at any given moment. They are not scrambling and scrapping and trying to make everybody be happy so that they'll use their stuff. They are now everywhere. And I, again, I don't care if people say, oh, well, they're not in another country. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Apple has the financial security and size within the global market to not have to worry about individuals anymore. They're not operating on that scale at this point. That was true when they were in trouble, but they are well past that point now. So I don't think it's that Tim Cook is sitting up there going, you know what? We don't need creators anymore. I think instead it is, okay, what makes fiscal sense for us to maximize profits in the next quarter? Well, let's do that. Oh, wait, there's somebody who's not giving us our due. Well, let's go and knock on their door and say, you have to pay up now. That's the way that companies at this scale operate. And the idea that Apple is still a kind of quirky little company that really cares about its users, that's long over. Let that dream drift away because you're well, you're well outside of that range at this point. Apple is on the big stage and has been for a while, let's be honest. And like other companies on that stage, they're going to act in their own bottom line best interest. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but when I see this outrage from people, I sit there and go, understand Apple is a big company now. That's what it is. Get used to it. Later.